Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Asaf Mueller. I'm a software engineer over at Red Hat. Hello, everyone. My name is Sylvain Chin. I'm a software engineer at Innovans. Um, and uh, since we're just, by the way, these lights are blinding. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I thought that since we're after lunch, we should start with a quick warm up. And uh, I wanted to talk a bit about Red Hat and, you know, how we're so successful now. We bought all of these companies, right? We purchased Innovance and we bought, purchased uh, Ink Tank, my own money. And we purchased uh, parts of the moon, I think. And uh, <laughs> in fact, we're so successful now that they're pairing us up in hotel rooms. So when we go to this conference, you know, we have. We sleep two people in the same room. It's, uh, it's very European. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, we're an innovative company. And we thought maybe, you know, everyone are talking about distributed com computing and parallelization. And we thought, why not parallelize basic human uh, operations, right? So instead of waking up, going to the bathroom, going back, the other person, my roommate, wakes up, goes to the bathroom, goes back instead, why not go together? So, <laughs> so we tried it out. And there's, there's Mike right there. <laughs> so we went to the bathroom, and uh, we took a bath together. <laughs> it was lovely. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we ate a big breakfast. So what do you do after that? <laughs> so we took a shit together. And... Uh, <laughs> And that was lovely as well. And uh, no, seriously, it's possible if you just kind of align yourself. <laughs> you can begin. Hmm? I continue. Yeah. Okay. Well, before we start, we, we want to share um, uh, how we feel when when we have to to manage or to to operate. Um, uh, an L3 agent, and this uh, presentation is about uh, HA in Neutron, especially for the for the L3 node. And I think uh, when we have to to operate an L3 node, we, we are feeling a bit like uh, this guy, and I'm pretty sure uh, we are not the the only ones. So let's let's see why exactly. Since uh, the ISA version, uh, we are able to to spawn as many L3 agents as we want. Uh, we are able to distribute the load uh, across all the L3 nodes de deployed. Uh, uh, all the L3 agents are able to, to get connected to the same external network or to many external networks. But finally, we still have the same issue. Uh, if we lose one of the, the L3 agents, uh, all the VMs uh, uh, connected to uh, to it or relying uh, on it, uh, we lost uh, uh, the L3 connectivity, which means that uh, no more private to private uh, traffic and no more private to external network traffic. Um, that that is the situation in the ISOs uh, version. Uh, there is some solution. Uh, I'm going to expose one uh, one of them. Uh, which is a L3 agent ill check. Um, the goal of this tool is, is to, to manage, uh, to recover a such situation, and finally, by, uh, by rescheduling virtual routers hosted on a failing uh, agent uh, to the remaining uh, L3 agent. Um, in order to use it, you have to, to deploy this tool on each L3 agent. Uh, there is a um, uh, synchronization mechanism in order to, to coordinate uh, uh, the migration when there is a failure. Uh, this mechanism is done thanks to the RPC bus already used by Neutron. So let's see what uh, happens uh, when there is a failure. So when there is a failure, one of the e-check adjunct will take care of it and we'll ask the controller to, to reschedule the, the virtual routers hosted, hosted on the failing agent to the remaining uh, agent. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the virtual router uh, R1 uh, moved it from the agent 1 to the agent 2. So there are some pros and cons uh, using this tool, or this kind of tool. Um, 
currently the prompts are, it doesn't affect the, your current deployment. So you can use it right now on your ISAUS architecture or deployment infrastructure. Uh, it is able to, to remove a node if it is isolated, which means that there is a, a, something like a ping mechanism to, to detect if a, a node is, is uh, isolated from the, the external point of view or something like that. And uh, it can handle or manage a migration. It is a distributed service, so no single point of failure with these services. And it works since Grizzly, it's quite lightweight. The cons now, it's still not full HA. Since there is no stateful, uh, the migration at, is quite long, uh, depending on the number of virtual routers finally hosted on all the infrastructure. Uh, it is not an official OpenStack project. It is open source. You can find it on the GitHub of Innovance, but it's not an official product. And finally, it is not the, the right way to, to achieve HA. So let us have introduce uh, the Juno work? Sure. So uh, there's also, just uh, before we talk about Juno, there's a similar solution, uh, which I saw in a few places on the web and blogs and such, is basically to write a Python script, a Python a script that uses the SDK to kind of detect when an agent goes down, take all of the routers on that agent and reschedule them, and then just run that script in a cron tab or something. Uh, so there's a lot of these similar solutions out there. And what uh, Kevin did in uh, Juno is to bake, basically take something like that and bake it into Juno, into Neutron itself. In fact, into the Neutron controller. So there's basically uh, a code that just runs in a loop that gets all of the agents, detects if one of them is dead. Basically, if he hadn't sent an RPC heartbeat in a while, he's considered dead by that point. So we take all of the routers on that agent and just move them over. This is an optional feature. You can turn it on by that uh, configuration flag over there. And it suffers from the same shortcomings of uh, all of these similar solutions, is that basically you reschedule routers one by one. So you basically have to take the entire router and configure it on the new agent. And that can take a while. It's basically linear in nature. and. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's decent for a small-scale uh, cloud, but basically once you cross around 1,000 routers, we've seen it take over an hour, uh, at which, you know, it, that, that's an hour's worth of downtime, which is a lot. So um, we thought we'd do something a bit different. And instead of kind of reacting to a failure and moving over all of the routers after it happens, we basically preemptively schedule a router on two different network nodes, or how, however, however many you configure. Uh, and then we basically do a really quick failover once we detect one. So it uses Keep Alive uh, internally, which itself uses VRP internally, which is a protocol that's used in the routing, the physical routing world. Right? If you have, you want, if you want redundancy of your uh, virtual of your default gateway, your uh, physical routers can talk via protocol via VRP. The master router basically says, "I'm the master. I'm the master. I'm the master." It's kind of a narcissist uh, protocol. And uh, <laughs> the other router basically listens to these master messages. And if, if, the, if he hadn't received three of these messages uh, in a row, he basically says, you're dead. I'm the new master. So Keep Alive uses VRP internally. And we'll talk about, talk about that a bit. Um, just a few uh, points that I want to uh, highlight kind of from a top-down point of view is that the routers themselves are active-passive. That is, we schedule the same router on two agents. So one of those router instances is active and the other is passive. However, that means that from an agent's point of view, all of your agents are now active. Because if you have, for example, uh, three agents, that as you can see, we take router one, we schedule it on the first agent and the second agent. right? And for example, router three, we scheduled it on the second and third agents, so all of your agents actually have active or master instances of, of routers, so they're all forwarding traffic and taking some of the hit. Uh, more, uh, uh, an interesting point to talk about is how do you actually segment your routers into clusters, uh, both within a tenant and also between different tenants. So 
VRP or Keep Alive uses VRP, and then VRP has this thing called a VR ID, which is basically a, the identification number of a router cluster. Here I define a cluster as the, the master and the backup instances of router one. Right, that's one router cluster, and we have three clusters here total. So it's basically one cluster per router. Um, so what we do is that when we create the first HA router, we detect that it's the first router uh, for a tenant, and we create a new neutron network. This is just a normal tenant neutron network. We use whatever segmentation technology you have defined, if it's VLANs or, uh, or tunneling or whatever. And we basically create a new network, and all of, the, all of your uh, HA routers for that specific tenant will use that network from now on to pass these VRP master messages that we talked about earlier. So between different tenants, we can segment the VRP traffic because each tenant has its own network, right? But inside of a single tenant, for example here, router 1 and router 2 belong to the same tenant, we, use the, we basically uh, allocate a unique VR ID per router, which is uh, what you can see here in the diagram. Um, so kind of going deeper down into the details, uh, we made changes to the server and to the layer 3 agent. That was pretty much it. Um, for the server, we basically talked about creating VRP or HA networks, and then each router instance is, gets a, a unique HA port inside of that network, uses that port to send and receive the VRP traffic. And for the agent, we use, we basically, you know, the agent basically manage, manages a keep alive D process pair router. And the, all of the IP addresses, as we can see here, Right? We have two agents. That The left one would be the active instance, and the right one would be the, the backup instance in this case. So I have a, a unique keep alive process on both agents. The HA, the, the blue HA box, mean that's the HA port that the router gets. So you know, beforehand, you basically had the internal device or the QR device, the external device or the QG device. If you did you know, IP, net, and S, exec, then the name of the router, you would see two devices and the loopback loop device. Now you would see a new device, which is the HA device, which gets uh, an IP allocation from a configured uh, subnet. Uh, so all of the keep alive traffic goes through that HA interface. The IP addresses themselves are only configured on the master instance. This is something that keep alive basically does for us. We configure keep alive and we tell them, listen, the internal and the external IP address, as well as all of the floating IPs, they're all basically now VIPs, or, or uh, uh, virtual IP addresses. So only the master instance configures the IP addresses. Once we have a failover, right, the, the left agent uh, died, the box died, the cable disconnected, whatever. We have a failover, keep alive detect acts in, right now it's, it takes around seven seconds to fully configure the new uh, router instance, and the IP addresses will basically appear uh, on, the, on the new uh, agent, and a gratuitous ARP will be sent per new IP address so that your network switches and whatnot know where the new uh, address is. Um, another kind of interesting distinction is that the HA network and the HA ports within that network, we actually hide them from the tenants as it's pretty much an implementation detail. So from an admin's point of view, if you list networks, you can see all of your HA networks. From a tenant's point of view, you cannot. Same from the ports, right? The HA ports, again, are hidden from tenants. <clears throat> so what if I have three agents, just like the example we saw, and we, I want to know where are my router instances, right? So we can do that with uh, listing, basically, all of the agents per router. This is what you'll get in Juno, hopefully, for Kilo, you'll also get to see where the master is and maybe e even influence that. Let's uh, head over for a demo. OK, in order to, to, to better understand what, what happens when there is a failure and how it works, we are going to show you a little demo. Uh, 
And let's start with create by creating a, a virtual routers as usual. Uh, let's set a, a gateway. In this demo, you will see uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, recover time you can expect. And now we have the router. Uh, let's check that we have uh, uh, the same namespace uh, used by the both uh, nodes, which are the node two and the node three on the uh, at the left side. And we are going to start, uh, yes, we can check that we have the HA interfaces and the external uh, interface, which are the, the HA one and the, the QJ one. And we are going to start uh, uh, a little TCP dump to see on which agent the, uh, the traffic he, uh, is going. Okay, so we are going to, to attach a, a private network in order to, to be able to boot a VM on it and to test the connectivity. That's what we are doing right now. So now we are going to boot a VM, attach it to the private network. Let's say the VM1, I guess. And finally, we are going to to attach, uh, to associate a floating IP on it. Okay, we are we have our VM booting. The floating IP is associated, so now we can check if the VM is up. I think we are going to see that just after. So let's do a little ping on, on the floating IP and let's wait uh, the, VM, the VM. But we can see that the traffic is going through the node at uh, the right top, which means that this is a master. And now we have the, the ping. We are going to, to shut down this node, which is a master, to see what is the, the, the recovery time we can expect. And normally you can see the, the traffic going through the, the, the node uh, at the bottom right. Okay, the traffic now it is stopped. And we will see that the traffic will go through the, the slave node, which is now the master finally. So it gives you a, a little bit. <laughs> from a, just from a very uh, really basic lab test that we did, it, was, it took around seven or eight seconds to fail over a single router, and then uh, 10 seconds to fail over 30 routers. Uh, with kind of a more traditional solution, it would it's basically around five seconds per router, so it, it completely scales linearly. For 30 routers, that would be 30 times five seconds, which is, isn't, just, just isn't as nice. Okay, now we are going to see uh, what is the remaining work we have to do, and what is the ongoing work, ongoing work, sorry. Um, there is a kind of impro improvement that uh, we, are, uh, we are going to, to push in the Kilo release. Uh, finally, uh, as uh, Asaf uh, said, uh, uh, we are able to, to know exactly where your uh, virtual router are hosted, but we don't know where is the master. And, and we are going to, to, to submit or to fix this in the next release of uh, uh, Neutron or OpenStack uh, to, to get this information back to the controller. And thanks to the API, we, we, will, we will be able to, to know where is your master. Um, Currently, there is no more. Uh, this is this is not a stateful solution, so you, we are going to introduce the contract G solution in order to to keep the TCP session uh, up or some other session. Uh, there is an ongoing work to 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 give us your uh, the possibility to migrate a legacy router to an HA, and um, yeah. And uh, currently, uh, in Juno, uh, the DVR uh, uh, solution uh, has been introduced, but there is no way 
right now to, to, to use both uh, solution, uh, especially for the, for the SNAT, traf uh, SNAT traffic. The limitation now, uh, currently, uh, we only use one uh, HA network per tenant, so we have a limitation due to the VAR peer protocol, which is to 255 uh, virtual net, uh, routers per HA network. We can remove the, uh, this limitation by allowing to, to spawn or to create a, a more than one uh, HA network per tenant, but it's quite good for, for now. Um, we can improve with this solution uh, the east-west traffic and the north-south traffic, but this is most the goal of the, the DVR. So that's why I'm going to talk a little bit to give you a, a little overview of the DVR approach. Uh, it so the goal of the DVR approach is to almost remove all the traffic going through an L3 node. So all the virtual routing uh, is distributed to the compute node, which means that you, you don't have any more east-west traffic going through an L3 node. This is mainly the same thing for the, for the north-south traffic uh, when you, you are using a floating IP. Uh, but uh, you still have to use an L3 node when you are using uh, the SNAT mechanism, so when your VM doesn't have a floating IP. Uh, uh, yes, as is, um, some services could be also distributed like uh, the firewall as, as a service or the DHCP, for example. Finally, without uh, the DVR, so in Ice House, we have this situation. When two VMs hosted on, a, on the same uh, compute node, uh, but uh, Attach it to a different networks. Uh, if a VM wants to, the VM1 wants to, to send some packet or some traffic to the VM2, the traffic will go through the L3 agent. It's, it is, this is quite inefficient, and we have a bottleneck here and a spoof, a single point of failure. This is the same thing if the VM4 wants to send packet to the VM1, uh, of course. And with the DVR, for the S-West traffic, uh, there is an instance of the DVR on each compute node. Uh, thanks to that, there is no more traffic going through the L3 agent. The traffic will stay at the compute node level. And yeah, so no more, no more signal point of failure, no more bottleneck, more efficient. For the floating IP, all the floating IP are scheduled on the compute node uh, which hosts the, the VM. So we can see here that there is no more traffic going through the L3 agent. Uh, same thing for uh, north source traffic uh, with floating IPs. All the NAT mechanism is done by the DVR instance. In fact, there is more than one namespace as usual when, when we are using DVR. It's more complicated like than that, but finally, I, we just put a, a DVR instance here to, to, for better un understanding. And as I said, we still, have, we still need a, a, a central XZ point or a central XZ L3 node in order to, to, to have external connection when there is no f uh, floating IP. And that's what we say here. The VM1 uh, doesn't have any floating IP, so the traffic uh, should go to, to the L3 node. Here yeah, in this slide, we, we can see that there is VRP plus SNAT here, which is not the case in the, in, the, in the Juno release, but we are going to work on this for the Kilo release. So in the Kilo release, we hope that there will be no more uh, single point of failure for this kind of traffic. So just a summarization of all of the million different uh, solutions here. So. Um, the first solution that uh, Sylvain mentioned is the RPC health check one, right? We have the rescheduling, which is the, the, basically the loop that's built into the, to the Neutron uh, server. We have the layer 3 HA one, which is based on Keep Alive and DVR. So if we want to kind, kind of look at it from a high level point of view and outline the differences, uh, the health check one has been there for a while and it's in production in a few different clouds. Uh, rescheduling, it's, it's just, it's really simple. It's basically the simplest uh, way you could solve it. Uh, with the layer 3 HA, the failover is very quick. Uh, also, it's the, the failover itself um, 
as opposed to the previous solutions, it's indifferent to the management plane. That is, uh, the failover detection and the failover itself works in the data plane, uh, which can be a pretty significant advantage. And DVR basically kills uh, all traffic to the network node, or most of it, which is something that we really want to do. Um, right, we have the, the releases. Uh, DVR at this point requires tunneling and L2POP enabled. Uh, there's, there's talks about uh, introducing VLANs as well. Uh, and basically what you actually need to do to your cloud if you want to upgrade and if you, if you actually want to use one of these uh, solutions. Uh, both the, the, the first uh, solution requires you to install a new agent right, on your network node. That's probably not such a big deal. Uh, rescheduling is the simplest one. You just enable a configuration option and you're good to go. Uh, layer 3 HA, I want to talk about that for a minute. Basically, it's the same for DVR and Layer 3 HA. You have to enable, the admin can enable or disable a configuration option. And from that point on, all of the tenant routers will be HA or DVR by default. Uh, while admins can always overrule. From the horizon point of view, if, when you create a router, you can choose it's a radio button. Right now, it's mutually exclusive. You can either uh, create a legacy router, an HA router, or a DVR router. We would like to, uh, to be able to create a router that's both, that's Kilo or maybe even for the L release, honestly. Uh, while DVR requires some topology changes, right? You need your compute zones, obviously, to be able to, to be connected to the external network. Um, we'd love to take some questions. Is what supported? Sorry? With the Linux bridge mechanism driver. Uh, with no. OVS only. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> they used uh, OpenV switch and, and basically flow based um, logic. Okay, so is there any hope for having Linux bridge support for Diva? Really unlikely. Okay, well, that's set to here. One observation is DVR without Linux bridge support is kind of useless for DVR, in my opinion. Secondly, because um, uh, I view OVS as kind of an, un it's like uh, adding three extra gears to a transmission that does nothing for you. Uh, it slows your machine down. You, anyway, let's not get but, that. There's yeah. a, there is a significant bug in HA right now in the sense that you can't use L2POP with HA. Uh, yeah, we know. Is that going to be fixed in Juno or is that going to be put off to Kilo? Well, Juno is already out. We're definitely yeah. going to fix it for Kilo. It's probably backportable. I think so. Yeah, because so, yeah. yeah. Keep Alive D doesn't feed anything back to L2POP. And I know. It's, yeah. it's a problem. Okay, I just was curious when it was going to be fixed. Yeah, it's a high priority one okay. for sure. <laughs> but, but not until Kilo then. It's not going to be in, in between. Okay, thank you. I had a question about the VRRP uh, implementation over here. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> so is the VRRP keep alive, does it just detect the node is down? Or if, say, one of your, your networker nodes loses his uplink, you know, his way out, does that detect that too and fail over? Uh, or that's a decent enhancement. Scenarios? I think we have an open bug on that. But it, no, right now it's, it's just if you don't receive hello messages. Okay. So if it's the, the link is dead, if the node itself dies, if the keep alive process dies, something like that. But if, if the uplink uh, link goes out right now, we don't detect that, no. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, by the way, there's a list of open bugs ta tagged uh, layer3-ha. So if you have an issue, first check there. But uh, otherwise, just open a bug or talk to either one of us, and mm. we're super happy to get some more feedback. In a typical two-node two HA configuration, how do you prevent split brain? Well, we have a few. I, there's a few scenarios that I managed to cause split brain, but they're very artificial. Um, just from our testing, we haven't been able to induce split brain at this point. But uh, I think it would be very similar to a physical, you know, just. Basic, it's very similar to just basically taking two boxes and configuring Keep Alive manually, like so many people are doing. It's a pretty proven uh, technology. 
But uh, if you manage to reproduce a split brain again, before the bug, and we'll fix it. <coughs> Excuse me? Yes. Um, sorry. Uh, don't you think that um, uh, automatic rescheduling should uh, be replaced by uh, uh, VIRP instead and uh, have only one HA solution for S3 node? Should be uh, they're different. Uh, for one, the rescheduling loop uh, depends on the RPC bus. Um, on the other hand, it's, I think it's less risky. If you're more conservative and you, you, you just upgraded to Juno and you want to try it out, try the rescheduling <coughs> loop first, probably. It's literally just turning on a configuration option and seeing if it works for you. Uh, layer 3 HA is a bit more complicated. It's you know around 100 times more lines of code. I'm sure there's more bugs there. We're not that good of a developers, honestly. <laughs> Um, first of all, uh, great stuff, guys, especially the bathroom stories. <laughs> uh, my question is about the firewall as a service. If you use the VRP solution, how do you manage? Uh, is it still possible to use the firewall as a service because it's running on the L2 agent and using the interface? So, you want to take that? So I think this is pretty the same thing, but finally we, we didn't uh, Test uh, this uh, very well. This is uh, this is something that we have to do in the kilo version. But mainly, you have a, a, all the interfaces are managed by people ID instead of the L3 agent, and all the interfaces are the same. It's a matter of uh, maturity and testing. Yeah. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, it should work. Yeah. That's a famous developer thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about uh, IPv6? Is it were supported in DVR and uh, keep alive? IPv6, yeah. Fully functional, virtual IP, and. Uh... Oh, I don't think that the IPv6 works with uh, with the DVR. I think this is a, an ongoing work, but uh, we have to check with the DVR team. And for for the HA. Yeah, uh, I think this is pretty the same thing. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Thank you.